All right, g'day guys, welcome back to True Footy and yet another edition of Just the Tips. I'm joined by Senor Druz. How are you, mate? Yes. Today we have got obviously round 12, the first edition of the buy round. So uh, this is one of three weeks in a row where there's going to be less games and obviously shorter videos. So people ask for the videos to be shorter. There you go. <laughs> people just generally ask for less content. Round 11 was a bit of a sorry affair for both our clubs, being West Coast and Fremantle fans. But in terms of footy tipping, it's actually a bit of a decent week, you'd have to say. We both got seven. Mm -hmm. Did you? Uh, you move actually down the the rankings that we're about to get into, but I moved up. Um, so we'll get into that. You are on 72. Two correct tips down to 26, which uh, seems like mm. to most people that'd be pretty good. But you were like what fourth not long ago? Yeah, Something stupid. fourth from Grace. I think most people would have got seven this round. I was so close to tipping Melbourne. Literally in the lead up to that game on the live stream, I was like, I should tip Melbourne. I should mm. tip Melbourne. I should tip Melbourne. I'll stick with my tip for the Bulldogs. Fuming about that one, but uh, yeah, I'm not that good of a tipper. I think it was a bit of an early season luck for me. So um, yeah, 26. I'll climb again, but yeah, don't think I'll climb too much. Yeah, last week was obviously uh, there was a real 50-50 game to start the round with uh, the first versus second Melbourne and the Bulldogs at Etihad. We, uh, well, Marvel ra rather. Um, we both tipped the dogs sillily. Yep. That's not a word. It is now. Yeah, so I think that would have would have separated quite a few tippers this week. So there were probably plenty of people who got eight and obviously I think the one most people got wrong was West Coast versus mm. Essendon as well. So we had the same tips. Let's see if we have different tips this round. That'd be interesting. I am still languishing in 336th with 64 correct tips around the mid part of, uh, of the table. And then Dad, um, as he likes to remind me, is uh, sort of moving back into the top 100. He's 104th at the moment uh, with a sexy number of 69. I wish I hadn't said that about my dad. But as we always do, we will shout out the winners of this round in terms of the Just the Tips footy tipping competition uh, that you can find on ESPN Footy Tips. Probably getting close to the part where I'm going to stop inviting people into the league because we're, you know, halfway, halfway through the season. So if you want to join, you haven't yet, get in quick because uh, well, the link is in the description. But we'll shout out the first winner of the round, Jess Hayden, who tipped the correct nine. That means they... Obviously tipped Essendon. Had a good mm. feeling about that one. Did nominate as my upset of the round, but wasn't brave enough to do it. Um, and a margin of 17 as well. So that's outstanding, Jess. Well done. The leader overall is back-to-back -back Ned Ryan with 76 correct tips, four ahead of you, Drewsy, uh, and a cumulative margin of 324. And again, and it's hard to see this guy getting toppled as our AFL fantasy leader. You're going to cry Sean Carr with a margin, or an average rather, of 2053, which is really, really good. I've breached 2,000 two weeks in a row, so mm -hmm. I was pretty happy with my own form, but I think everyone's starting to do well now so yeah languishing Jack McRae doing a business for you yeah true yeah he's been killing it he's been my captain two weeks in a row but this round will truly separate some men from some boys um, it's the first of three buy rounds as we said and mm. obviously uh, yeah the the fantasy landscape gets messed up around yeah, the start of the year, so we'll see how that goes. Before we take a look at round 12, guys, do need to shout out the sponsors of today's video, wow. manscaped.com. If you have ball shaving or, you know, chest shaving needs as we get into colder winter, I know there's a temptation to maybe let the chest hair grow out and maybe a little bit of more body warmth, but I wouldn't recommend it. It does fuck all. Yeah, as we know, the viewers and listeners to the True Footy YouTube channel can enjoy 20% off and free shipping on their products if you go to manscaped.com and use the code TRUEFOOTY20, all caps, all one word you get some really, really good products at a very good price. And of course, if you want to see our thoughts on the previous round, go to Drewzy's channel, link in the description, and check out the Drew Footy Show, which should be up, or we take a look at uh, your questions from the previous round and answer them and talk about how every team is going. All right, let's get into round 12, the first game of which is... A, a slobber knocker! <laughs> yes, the first game of the round is a slobber knocker, as Drewzy uh, has suggested, but this is a potentially another grand final preview. This mm -hmm. is probably the two best sides in the comp right now. I'm thinking Brisbane are at least the form side of the competition, based on what we've seen so far as we've won seven in a row. So, absolutely killing it at the moment. Still question marks on where this game will be played. So, I've officially put it up as Trigger Park, because that's where you know it currently is. But, obviously, I think they've ruled out Victoria as hosting it, and they've ruled out uh, Northern, Northern Territory, Territory because of their border policy at the moment. So, uh, we won't know where this game is, uh, maybe maybe by the time this comes out we, we will, yeah. but we'll say maybe you know Giant Stadium or SCG, SCG Metric or whatever, we don't really know but we can assume that it's going to be a neutral venue we saw the D's you know, pull out one of the biggest statements of the year, beating the top spot at the time Dogs, uh, Dogs obviously came into that game with heaps of momentum, um, we both backed them even though you know we obviously believe Melbourne could win, but you know Clayton Oliver had 32 and a goal, Petrarca 24 and a goal and yeah, you really saw the shining lights all across the field from Melbourne, they weren't really threatened for much of the game, they got out to a bit 
of a lead and you know held that lead really well. And they kept the dogs to their second lowest score of the season. This is yeah. a dog scene that obviously piles on the goals where they want to. The percentage was like 160 going into this game. Really, really polished performance. And the Lions equally look scary. Two goals and 35 possessions uh, to Zorko and four goals and 30 possessions to Robbo as they beat the Giants, who've been in really good form, just mm-hmm. beat the Eagles as well. So I am really struggling with who to tip here. I know you like the Ds. Where's your head at? I think, yeah, both performances last week were very big statement of wins. GWS aren't easy beats, so for Brisbane to do that, even though it was at home, it was a big result. Melbourne to beat the Bulldogs, the side that have been best in the comp pretty much all season, another huge result. It's so weird how the power rankings switch week to week. Like mm. Last week you said would have said the Bulldogs, or you did say the Ds were the top side in the comp, but after the Bulldogs have lost, Melbourne have beaten the Bulldogs. I think you got to tip Melbourne going into this one. Given the form all season long, I think Melbourne have been the top side. Um, I just wanted to say, I did say this on the Drew Footy Show, but the way Melbourne's up defensively is astounding. It's unreal. I love it. I, I would try to explain how they set up, but you can see how every line is set. Um, like a nice chessboard, got their pawns like set up in that, and then they've got like their bishops in that on the wings. And it sounds up. like my laptop, but except for the bishops. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of teams can get caught out from a switch and using the space in the ground, but Melbourne doesn't get through as we saw with the Bulldogs. They couldn't crack them. But uh, in terms of this game, Brisbane, I like Brisbane a lot. I like. Uh, the D's a lot. They're probably two of my top three sides after Freo, so I like these sides a lot. I will tip the Demons to win this one, but no idea how it's going to go. Uh, I'll tip them by 22. 22. Okay, I like it. So last week I was burned. I said Melbourne are the best team in the competition, but I like the momentum of the dogs, so I'm going to tip the dogs, and I'm going to do the exact same thing this time. I think the Demons are the better side. I think they're going to they're the favourite to win the flag. I believe that they're the real deal. But Brisbane are just so fucking good at the moment. I I'm don't gonna, know. I'm going to make you change your tip because Melbourne will win this game. Ugh, Melbourne will win this game. You could, you saw how hard the Bulldogs found it to crack, Mel- yeah. uh, to crack Melbourne. How are Brisbane going to do that? Look, if both sides play to their top potential, then Melbourne will probably win. Melbourne will cancel out Brisbane, I reckon. I'm going to tip the Brisbane Lions by You're gonna regret that. six points. You're gonna regret I need that. to catch up with you in tipping anyway. Yeah, so, so don't wrong. get this tip wrong nah, then. <laughs> come on, come on. Nah, I'm going to back, back him in. Brisbane Lions by six points. We'll move on to the second game of the round. St Kilda host the Sydney Swans at Marvel Stadium. St Kilda obviously coming off a, uh, would you say, convincing win against North? I probably wouldn't nope. use that word. <laughs> um, obviously, I think they got up to like a 43-point lead at three-quarter time. Ended up only winning the game by 20 points. Um, yeah. You know, the North, North kick... Four, five goals to one in the final term. So really unconvincing stuff from the Saints who obviously got battered the week before by 111 points. Can I just say right now, that just shows complacency. That, like St. Kilda have been showing all season long to show up some games and win and then to show up other weeks and lose. This is it in a, in a micro cycle, in a game where you're playing North Melbourne, you're up by 43 points. Keep going. Why would you stop? Getting five goals kicked on you in a quarter and only scoring one when you're up by 43 points... That is the crux of the issues with St. Kilda. Nah, bro, their percentage is fine. Their percentage is like my poo. Probably, yeah. But yeah, very unconvincing from the Saints. And Sydney had a win against Carlton this week. So, you know, they'll be keen to to keep that rolling. And I think they will, Jesse. I think they will keep the wins rolling. And they'll beat St. Kilda quite comfortably. Where is it? Marvel? Doesn't matter. Marvel, Schmarvel, Sydney. 35-point win. 35 point. That is a, a generous victory. Uh, yeah, the Saints obviously have some issues, particularly in front of goal. I think Max King has kicked two goals eight in the last three games. So one of those many players around the league who are having the you know the yips in front of goals at the moment. There's some positives. Steele and Dunson had 25 tackles. So and that's not really a weakness for them anyway. But yeah, at least you know some of these grunt players are getting in and getting stuck in. Uh, on the flip side, Sydney a good mature win over the Blues who challenged them. Uh, the Blues had their opportunities to win the game. Heaney had three goals and 22 possessions. Probably going to... I wouldn't have him in my All-Australian team right now, Just but yet. you'd probably back him in with a good injury run to be there at the end of the year. So he had three goals, 22. And the Swans are 7-2 and two with Heaney in the team and 0-2 oh without him. So mm. he's a bit of a barometer player for him. I'm going to agree with you. I think the Swans will win this. I think... I want to say St. Kilda will be a challenge, but we don't know what side St. Kilda will bring to it. I'll, I'll say 17 points, but either way, I'm tipping Sydney. Next up, we're going to take a trip south to Adelaide Oval. Adelaide are playing Collingwood, um, obviously, at Adelaide Oval, believe it or not. Let me let me stop you right there, mate. If we're taking a trip from Marvel, where we were just discussing, to South Australia, you've actually got to go northwest. So Is it really? Yep. 
Rats! I just thought, you know, South Australia makes yeah. sense. But yeah, of course. Yeah, now I think about Adelaide is quite northern. Anyway, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Fuck me. Uh, we'll look at the Crows first. Uh, coming off a game against Richmond where they lost by, uh, you know, a handful of goals. But, you know, weren't without their chances. They were, like, mm. up by, like, four goals in the first quarter. And then in the last quarter, they kicked the first three. Like, it was a topsy-turvy game. Um, a game they weren't expected to win. And I thought they put up an acceptable challenge. Their young back line held up really well. They had guys like Nick Murray, Jordan Butts, Tom Dode, all pretty young fellas, you know, in that team. Um, and I think Will Hamill played as well. So, yeah. A lot of raw talent in that and that Crows side that's not uh, obviously mature. But, you know, to, to put in the contest they did, I think they'll be relatively okay with it. Uh, ben Key's obviously continuing his incredible season. Mm. 31 touches, 129 fantasy. And Tex Walker, four goals, keeps him in touch with the common medal race as well. He's had a real Randy Orton season, Keys, out of nowhere. He's, uh, he's playing really well. I will say this about Adelaide. I would prefer to support Adelaide right now than the, than the Dockers. I just think the way that they play, they are hungry. Here's your headline. Drewsy's switching teams. Yeah, well, no, obviously I'll fucking support the Dockers, but I have more confidence in Adelaide winning a flag before Freo. Really? To be honest. You can see that those players are hungry to win every game. They'll show up every quarter. To be in the contest with Richmond after four quarters, but quarter for quarter, they pretty much match Richmond. Obviously, Richmond ran away with it in the end, but you can see these players gut running, like putting their head over the ball. They're, they're a hungry side. They play with a lot of passion, which you can't say about the Dockers. I must say, Jersey, your ability to bring every game back to Fremantle is impressive. Moving on. Talking about Collingwood side of things, uh, obviously a 10-point loss to Geelong. It wasn't a bad game, as I said on the Drew Footy Show, in terms of, like, the fact that they got within 10 points of Geelong, it's, it's somewhat of a tick. You know, mm -hmm. I think I used the phrase that people are talking about how Collingwood were one goal 14 and talking about how shit they were in front of goal. But I think the story, the fact that they, you know, were in touch with Geelong yeah. the whole game says as much about Geelong as anything. But, uh... Grundy's going to be out for a little bit. Pinch nerve in the neck, so two to three weeks. Out for this game confirmed. They had the same scoring shots as Geelong and more inside 50, so that the, you know, the opportunities are there to win the game. They just can't quite get that end product. One goal to three-quarter time speaks to that. I think, as I said, one goal, 14. The Pies have had six goalless quarters this term. Oh. Yeah, and I think that's the most. And, believe it or not, this is a real incredible stat. Since the start of last year, bearing in mind Collingwood won a final last year, Collingwood have stumbled through 15 goalless quarters since the start of 2020. The only team to do that, to, to uh, exceed that, is Adelaide, who won the spoon last year. So, yeah. really shows, you know, where, you know, sometimes the opportunities just got, uh, dry up for them. And mm -hmm. we know they have forward line issues as well, which is probably a big part of that. But Adelaide versus Collingwood, Adelaide Oval, who do you think is going to win? Grundy, major out. Major out. He's been playing well. But to be fair to Collingwood, as you said, it's just been the scoring power, which they haven't been delivering. They've been very competitive in the last three weeks. So um, positive-ish signs for Collingwood, given the scheme of the season. It's not the worst part of the season for them at the moment. They've lost to three good sides in a row. Uh, Adelaide, last year they beat at Adelaide Oval. I remember that game. But I think Adelaide just show up with fire at home. They're, uh, they're not going to be intimidated by a Collingwood side who have lost three on the trot after taking it up to Richmond. Um, and the week before beating the D's. So I think Adelaide should win this one at home, but, and I think they'll win by 19 points. Yeah, I am thinking along the same lines. I do think Collingwood can win this game on the basis of, you know, as you said, a couple of good weeks in terms of uh, the intensity and, and the, the contest they bring into the game. And sometimes that all comes together in one game and they, they'll upset someone. It could be this game. I will tip conservatively. I think Adelaide are the better team, and they'll win by 12 points. I don't think Adelaide are the better team, but I think they'll win. Yeah. Well, they're not, are they? Yeah, yeah, yeah they, they are on form in this year, generally, I think. I think hard work know. beats talent when talent doesn't work hard. That's it. All right, next game, we have got Carlton hosting my beloved West Coast Eagles. This time at the SCG, which is probably the worst news that I could have heard. <laughs> the Eagles haven't won the SCG since 1999. Uh, admittedly, Sydney have been a good team over that stretch, but um, even when they're shit we, uh, and we're good, um, we generally lose to Sydney. So it would be interesting to see if we can play any better against the Carlton side that you know isn't you know too crash hot either. But obviously, COVID, COVID reasons means this game is to be moved to a neutral venue. So, Carlton fans, probably, I'd almost be licking my lips to play the Eagles at the SCG rather than the MCG, mm. considering how similar the um, the grounds are between yeah. Optus and the G. I think we play well there. But anyway, we'll get into Carlton, who were obviously at the SCG last week, put up a good uh, contest against Sydney, couldn't quite get it done. Paddy Cripps returning to, you know, the form that we, we know he can, and had 27 possessions and three goals. Okay, sweet. Sweet. Mackay had three... <laughs> 
I was kind of reacting to your third <laughs> like after the fact. Mackay sort of uh, not extends his lead in the common, but he kicked another three goals and he's sort of looking more and more like entrenched as the All-Australian key forward this year. Um, the Blues record against top eight teams hasn't been great this year and the Eagles mm. are still technically a top eight side, so this will be a new challenge for them. On the flip side, they did just beat Essendon and Essendon have done some good things over the last month. So the form line's okay. Yeah. On the Eagles side of the ledger, coming off uh, probably our most disappointing result in a while, and we've had some very disappointing results. Not this as year. disappointing as St Kilda. Second to that. All right, I'll pay that. I'll pay that. But it, it's not that far off in terms of you know a home game. We generally don't lose at home. To to do that, um, I think is a it's a bitter reminder that you know we're just really not quite that good. Um, and to compound that, Alan and Kelly are both going to miss Kelly probably for an extended period. Alan's confirmed out with a concussion. So. On top of some bad injury run, some indifferent form, um, where that's being compounded now, uh, especially from Tim Kelly, who's been our best midfielder this year, and that's probably the biggest stinky area of the ground for us. So inside 50s are also a major issue. We just don't generate enough. It's a smaller ground, so um, the Eagles are clearly not suited to it. How do you see this game going forward? The Eagles only suck because of their injuries. Shut up, Karen. You're wrong. I didn't say that. No, you didn't. <laughs> no, Eagles fans on, uh, on Facebook have been saying that. The yeah. only reason that West Coast suck is because of their injuries. It's not clicking for West Coast at the moment. I'm not sure why. Why do you think it is? I actually don't know why, because in my head, West Coast are a top five side in the comp, but they're just not playing that way at the moment. So I've done a 15-minute video on my channel, so if you want to see my in-depth thoughts on the Eagles, uh, you can go check that out where I'll explain it a little better. But the too long, didn't read version of that is uh, not generating enough inside 50s. The forward line has been really good at this year at converting, but if you look at the stats, we're, we're losing inside 50s, even in games we're winning comfortably, which... So there's a real issue there, and I think also confidence, both in terms of defensive pressure, we're not really at hunting the ball that much, and also with our ball movement, we're not playing as direct as we're used to. Mm -hmm. So we're taking, like, I think it's to hold our defensive shape. So, like, if we don't, you know, choose an attacking option, then the, the players can sort of stay in their defensive shape, yeah, if that makes okay. sense. Versus, you know, there was a time where we'd probably be more attacking with the way we'd use the ball. Willie Rioli's really good at it. Lewis Jetta, obviously no longer part of it. I think I think we're a lot more conservative, and as such, we're not getting enough opportunities. So um, that and just confidence and, you know, all of that, it's it's all hurting. And the injuries don't help, but that's not the reason. Yeah. I reckon Carlton will be licking their lips for this one. This is a hard game to tip. Um, obviously, if you if you use the Druzy logic, Carlton beat Essendon, Essendon beat West Coast. And the SCG. Essendon beat Fremantle, West Coast claps your cheeks. That's irrelevant. You just did that to hurt my feelings. <laughs> I, I don't know which way to tip here. Um, I've had a lot of faith in tipping West Coast this season, and they've let me down a numerous amount of times. Heart says Carlton, head says... 50-50. A majority <laughs> vote says West Coast. <laughs> that that, that <laughs> makes no sense. Oh, I think I just got to tip West Coast here, to really? be honest. Yeah. Okay. I'm glad you have, because I'm tipping Carlton. Uh, I think the SCG... Oh, the SCG, The SCG factor is the biggest part of it. If it was at the G, I'd actually back us in. But Carlton are decent. You know, they beat Essendon. Um, we can't get and away Essendon with... And Essendon beat you. Yeah. We can't get away and with... And Essendon beat you. Can't get away with uh, playing that that intensity again, um, and I just don't believe that we've got it in us to to do it this week. So only three losses on the trot. Yeah, and then we got Richmond and the dog. So yeah. oh <laughs> yes, lads. I'm gonna tip Carlton by ten points. <laughs> Fuck, that'd be bad. Well, I just realised we've skipped a game. The uh, one of the biggest clashes of the round, Essendon versus Richmond, and joy behold, we are potentially attending this game at Up the Stadium on yes. Saturday night. So Very you can keen. see a vlog probably on your channel. I yep. probably won't vlog. I'll just star in yours. The team we just talked about, Essendon, uh, obviously coming off a stirring win uh, in Perth, you know, focused a lot on how the Eagles were average, but Essendon have sort of... That was the scout that sort of uh, signified their ascension to being, you know, a half-decent team. Like, they would look like a rebuilding team early in the season, and now that they, they've really sort of... I think they've won a few people's respect, and rightfully so. So in the last quarter, they had 22 inside 50s to, to 6. In the, in the last quarter so domination really ran out the game a lot better than the Eagles who were probably one of the worst fourth quarter sides I think the worst fourth quarter side in the comp but the, the whole game Essendon were probably the better side and, and just couldn't quite sort of get a hold of their opportunities Parrish had 36 we've seen that when he gets 30 plus they generally win all but yeah. one game I think this year String was a big in for them kick three Richmond on the other hand lost their home game obviously had to play the Crows at Giant Stadium in Sydney but that didn't really hold them back and recorded you know a five goal win I can't mm -hmm. remember what it was but Adelaide did take it up to them Richmond was severely challenged got several goals down and then powered through and then withstood another late charge from Adelaide so a good mature victory for them Rewalt kicked uh, five uh, Calum Coleman Jones came in uh, to replace Lynch and kicked four and Bolton I thought was lively. He kicked one goal too, but you know, created some opportunities. So a lot of things looking decent for Richmond out of that game. Between these two sides, Richmond have won the last nine. 
But mm. obviously, this is not at the MCG. Not that it really matters. But Essendon, yeah, haven't beaten them since 2014. Do you, do you think there's any chance that, that changes this week? Yeah, they'll take a lot of confidence going into this game. How, how many times a video director will say confidence? Confidence, intensity, integrity, scoring power. Yeah. <laughs> Herpes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so obviously Essen will take a lot of confidence with their integrity to get some scoring power in this game nice. against Richmond. Um, but I think, yeah, just the head-to-head over the years, Richmond, and obviously Richmond are just a better side. But Essendon have had a very good six weeks, or around that mark. I'm not sure how long they've been playing well, but um, they've really come into some good mid-season form. I'll tip the Richmond Tigers to win this one. I'm so keen to go and watch this game. I, I haven't ever seen a game as an... Like a neutral. Oh, really? So, it's going to be the first time. Dream time as well. It's going to be a great display. Um, I'll tip Richmond to win this one by... I don't know. It could be a close game. I'm not sure on the margin. I'll just say 47.6643 points. Wow. 47.6643 points is a lot. I agree. I think this game has a a lot of potential to be a real cracker. I want to tip Essendon because I would love them to win. (laughs) I'll I'll be supporting Essendon. (laughs) But... Richmond might have just kicked into that gear where they're like, all right, our season's almost fucked. Yeah. So, you know, we saw it against uh, against Adelaide rather last week. They clicked in the gear. I think they'll be too good. I think Essendon have been really good, but Richmond will win this by 21. Cool. Can I change my margin to 27? Sure, buddy. Thanks. All right, so we did take some time to talk about how stinky my football team is. Let's talk about how Fremantle went against Port Adelaide. Okay, all right, never mind. We'll just skip it. That was just like my reenactment of the Dockers in the first quarter. <laughs> Deep. Fremantle obviously coming off a disappointing win against Port. I know you were imploring them going into this game that this was an opportunity to uh, to step up against a real contender, and they fell short. Now I think the first quarter lapsed. So they, Port Adelaide scored seven goals, even though the second and third third term terms were better um, yeah. for Fremantle. It just wasn't enough. The game was almost over by quarter time. So this week's not going to get any easier. The Bulldogs in Perth, uh, although there's a few positive signs. I don't think the the dogs have ever won at Optus, and you've also won the last last four games against them in Perth. So few things on your side, and I think Cher and Brayshaw would be the uh, the biggest positives. It could, must be good to have Brayshaw back. Yeah. They kind of led the midfield as well. We also what happened to the Dogs on Friday night. Their average winning margin from five games at Marvel was 65 points, so they're absolutely clapping some cheese there this year. The team has kept the Dogs to their second lowest score of the season, even with uh, Bont McRae doing, you know, being pretty productive in the midfield. Uh, yeah. I think McRae had a big game in terms of fantasy, uh, which is all that matters for me. <laughs> the Dogs would have lost a little bit of confidence there. Maybe a little mental edge now goes to the Ds, but in terms of this game, they're going to want to respond. How do you think Fremantle will go at home? Yeah, Fremantle are usually competitive at home. I think it's just the young players, like they get their misses, they get all their mates and they just try to flex and that's the only motivating factor for the Dockers because when we go away we just fucking crumble. That second and third quarter yesterday from the Dockers was good. Like we showed what we can actually do. We were 50 points down at some point in the second quarter I think and then we pulled it back to 21 um, but we just run out of legs because we just, yeah ran too hard in those second and third quarters and just didn't show up in the first, which cost us in the end. We pretty much ran the the Port Adelaide off the park in that second and third quarter. Nah, not quite. They, they were very clinical going forward. Um, we have to get three points before we get a goal, Dockers. That's how it works. We can never just go bang, bang, bang goals. Disappointing just effort from the Dockers, to be honest. Um, at home against the Bulldogs, we can put up a fight. To be honest, it wouldn't surprise me if we'd win this game. Like, Bulldogs are a great side, but we just stack up well against them. Very impressed with Brayshaw yesterday. It was one of my... It was very good to see him back. And um, he was very composed yesterday. Like, sometimes he's a bit of a bull, just sort of runs through packs, and he's a bit of an engine, slams the wall on the boot. But there was lots of times when he was under pressure, and he took the player on, come out on the other side of the pack, and then delivered the ball well as well. So, yeah, very good to have Brayshaw back. The safe tip for this game is the Bulldogs. Mm. Um... It'd be pretty stupid to tip Frio against one of the best sides in the comp. So I'll tip the Bulldogs to win this one, probably by about 28. 28, yeah. I'm probably going to side with you on that. The the form lines are a little compelling, at least, sorry, the history between the two sides where you, the Bulldogs still haven't won at Optus, but this is I've never seen a team this good uh, in the Bulldogs jumper come to Perth and play. Yeah, so for sure. I, I think they'll get the job done. I think, I think the Dogs will win by 21 points. Well, that's it, guys. That is our tips all wrapped up for you nicely in latex. (laughs) Well, that's it, guys. That is all of our tips done for this round. Let us know in the comments what you think of our tips. We went different on a couple this week, so let us know who you think is going to do better out of us two. But thank you guys for watching. Like the video if you enjoyed it. Do go check out Drewzy's channel for the Drew Footy Show this time every week where we talk about the previous round, as I said before. Um, Subscribe if you haven't already, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye. Bye. Thanks for 12K in me. Oh, yeah.